Welcome to our webinar on rebuilding the family altar, really speaking about the Elijah message. It is a common practice on college campuses today to have professors participate in what has been called last lecture talks. In these talks, professors are asked to think deeply about what matters to them and to express these thoughts in a hypothetical final instruction or guidance for the audience. The audience would be left to ponder their own ways of imparting wisdom if they knew they only had this final chance. Normally, the professors would be quite healthy while delivering a speech that suggested that their demise was imminent. Dr. Randy Posh, however, was not healthy when he delivered his last lecture. The 46-year-old professor of computer science at Carnegie Mellon University had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and given only a few months to live. This father of three used his final lecture to leave a legacy for his own children, his students, and the world over, as his lecture became a best-selling book. One thing that stood out in his book was his love for his family and for humankind. He encouraged us to be patient with others, saying, wait long enough and people will surprise you and impress you. He would show pictures of his childhood bedroom wall, decorated with mathematical equations he had drawn on the walls. He encouraged parents to allow their own children to draw, paint, and write on their bedroom walls as a favor to him, just as his mom had allowed him to do. He eventually impressed his mom by earning a PhD. She believed in him and was patient and supportive in helping him fulfill his dreams. He once said, like Moses, I get to see the promised land, but I don't get to step foot in it. It's interesting that in his academic lecture, Dr. Posh mentions a holy man of God. Indeed, Moses, too, had a lot to say to his students, his children, his people, the children of Israel, prior to his last climb up to Mount Nebo. Moses' last lecture, found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, commonly known as the Shema, first stresses to the children of Israel that there is only one true God and reminds them of the command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and might. The Shema admonishes parents to diligently teach their children to love God every opportunity they get in the morning, during the day, and at night. It is a declaration of faith, a pledge of allegiance to Jehovah, the one true God. Here's what Ellen White has to say on this topic. Let parents study the instruction of the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. If the counsels of the Word of God are faithfully followed, the saving grace of Christ will be brought to our youth. For the children who are trained to love and obey God and who yield themselves to the molding power of His Word are the objects of God's special care and blessing. The final message of Moses can be a companion to the final lecture of the Old Testament found in the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. That reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. These, to be sure, are the final words of the Old Testament. No prophetic words were spoken until 430 years later when Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, was visited by an angel in Luke 1, chapter 17, and given the very same prophecy, predicting that John the Baptist, the second Elijah, would go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to make ready for the Lord, a people prepared. So the Elijah message, what is it? Well, Elijah stands for the worship of Jehovah, the true God against the prophets of Baal. Elijah's work would become a type of ministry of John the Baptist, going in advance of Christ. Seventh-day Adventists identify with Elijah and see themselves as participating in the great heart-turning reformatory work predicted in Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children 
to their fathers. The Elijah message is a heart-turning message then and for us today. The Elijah message found in this passage of Scripture in Malachi says there will be turning of hearts before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. So this heart-turning is work that God is going to do before the second coming of Jesus Christ. The name Malachi means messenger. In the book of Malachi, the people had not only abandoned their covenant with God, but they had also abandoned their family covenants. Hence, the book of Malachi looks back to the times of Elijah the prophet, who confronted the altars of Baal worship and rebuilds the altar of Jehovah, the one true God. Elijah had to restore the broken altars and teach the people how to worship again, restore their memory of the last lecture of Moses, where they were reminded of the commandment to love the one true God. Then in 1 Kings 18, 36 through 37, Elijah begins a prayer by acknowledging the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the God his fathers worship. Let it be known that you are God in Israel. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. There always must be a heart turning when we come in commitment to God, back to God, if you will. The most miraculous part of this story is the extravagant love of God for his people. When the fire fell in verse 38, it consumed the burnt offering, but not the people. Despite the sinfulness of the people, God does not destroy them, but gives them an opportunity to repent and turn their hearts to him and to the ch their children and others. The promise of success in Philippians 4.13 is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May God help us as we too embrace the Elijah message today, that there will be a heart turning in our homes, in our homes, Adventist homes throughout the world, so that the fathers will turn their hearts toward their children and their children towards their fathers so that Jesus Christ can come and he can find us ready to meet him in the air. We hope that this will be the experience in each of your families as you embrace the building of the altar once again and going back to regular family worship. Pray with us as we ask God to help us to do just that. Let's pray, Elaine. Sure. Dear God, we thank you so much for this message of Elijah, the Elijah message, and for this heart-turning message, which turns the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. We pray this prayer for every family, for every person who is listening to this webinar today. And help us, Father, to trust you and to recognize that there is power resident in you and so we pray for our families and we pray for hearts that are open to receiving the blessings when they come together in the family altar. May they all rebuild their family altars and so make the worship of God central in each of their homes so we might be ready when you come soon. Help us to this end. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God, God bless, bless you. you.